it points up the fact that we have some problems uh, as far as our security is concerned. And so we're looking at uh, changing our staffing patterns, you know, but every situation is different, so you have to look at it that way. And uh, right now, it's, it's an isolated incident, but of course we are concerned about the security there. Yes, one moment. Well, most of them were against it. We haven't had anybody that uh, I've had a maybe, well, that note I took had one. He was in favor of it, but most of them have been against it. Uh, drilled each year, the state government would lose almost uh, two million dollars. And to put additional tax burdens on this particular group seems to me indicated to me that they want to royalty owner. On the other hand, it's obvious from the more favorable treatment afforded to producers that a big campaign war chest is needed to get favorable action from the White House. It's unlikely that we can ever match their spending, but we can match their votes many times over. And I'll guarantee you, gentlemen, take it back to the Potomac. We won't forget when George Bush comes calling with flowers in his hand next year. There should be some questions that the public has about organ donation, and we have a lot of pamphlets here that can answer questions about the kinds of organs that can be donated and what you do to facilitate that process. The budget cuts the city council was faced with today hit virtually all city services and could result in the layoffs of 275 city employees. Council members asked for the cuts to get $12 million more to fix the city's deteriorating streets and water system. But no one here seemed happy about how they were having to do it. I also, in going through here, attempted to, to recommend things that, uh, that I thought were at least possible. That's, that's not to say that, uh, that I think they're a wonderful idea, and in many cases I don't. The proposed budget would cut an additional $777,000 from the police department, including the elimination of 22 officers, reduced funding for drug operations, and a nearly 50% cut back in the use of the police helicopter. 18 current vacancies in the fire department would not be filled. In addition, 24 current firefighters would be laid off along with several administrative and clerical positions. Some of the biggest budget cuts come in the Park and Recreation Department, where 109 employees could lose their jobs. In addition, four community centers would be closed, along with eight junior pools. But most of the concern is over public safety, and some council members thought the cuts went too far. The departments should not be touched, and that includes the police and fire, as far as I'm concerned. They're they were touched. 
Yes, they were definitely touched uh, to such an extent that I think that it would be very damaging to the people's safety in Oklahoma City. It appears two of the more controversial recommendations, closing the Civic Center Music Hall and reducing garbage pickup to once a week, may be spared the budget cutting acts. But despite that, virtually every service the city offers is being affected. And as one city councilman said, these budget cuts are very deep. Jeff Fowler, News 4, City Hall. The revised bare bones budget proposed laying off 22 police patrol officers and 24 firemen. But council members made it clear tonight, while they were willing to cut a lot of things, public safety was not one of them. You cut emergency services to the quick and you expect people to operate that way and it just doesn't happen that way. It takes longer to get there and lives in, in fire department case will be saved. I just don't believe you can afford to uh, gamble. I just think it's uh, you're gambling too much human life when you eliminate so the council voted to restore the most crucial personnel and exempt the police and fire departments from the hiring freeze. The two chiefs were pleased. Oh, yes, certainly glad to have that much restored because, you know, we were actually, because of the vacancy rate we have right now, we were actually having to look at possible layoffs uh, as a result of, you know, the original proposal. We were very pleased at the, at the reaction that we received from the city council here today in relationship to the fire protection for the citizens of this community. When the day-long meeting was over and the cuts totaled up, the council had cut an additional $10 million from the budget, giving them a total of $30 million to use toward capital improvements. $30 million isn't much in the grand scheme of things, but when you have to cut it out of operations, why, well, it's, it's a good, good step and it's a good progress and it's something we have to do. Jeff Fowler, News 4, City Hall. We could do. A lot of unanswered questions the citizens want of this county want to know, and we believe that um, they need to be answered. We think that they may be very um, enlightening once they are answered, and they haven't been answered and don't look to be answered to this point. Years ago, we uh, more than doubled, it seemed like, the stable and efficient government where they'd locate here. One, I think it's in Tennessee or Kentucky, and uh, uh, I've, I've gotten calls, a uh, great many, for Robert Bolt. We have a choice between raising money for education, for the state employees and salary increases, through reform, through economy, and through moderate increases in taxes. That's the proposal on the one hand, or we have this bill, which is a massive tax increase, which calls for bloated government, and which we know will lead to no more reform. If we don't pass this bill, and if the Senate doesn't pass it, we have a standstill budget, and when you stand still, you go backwards. We have notified the local health departments to the sanitarians will go out and uh, check the grocery stores and other retail outlets that might handle the product and if there's any left on the shelves they will be helped and uh, 
and uh, eventually turned back in. Jan and Ricky DeLeith, with their children, are considered to be the typical Oklahoma family. They both work. Together, they bring home $25,000 a year. Now, last year, they paid nearly $700 in state taxes. But with this new tax program, they will pay nearly $850. Here's why. The tax plan raises the state sales tax by one and one quarter percent. So every time the Leafs go to the store for groceries, clothing, or for any other necessities, they'll have to pay higher taxes. That sales tax increase could mean an additional $21 a year for this family. The price they pay at the pump is also going up. With two cars estimating two tanks of gas each week, the Leafs will pay an additional $16 a year to the state in gas taxes. In addition to that, this family will have to pay $15 per car for the new road user fees, the privilege of using Oklahoma roads and highways. Licensing the Leafs pickup truck will cost more, too. Truck tags will now jump an average of $25 per license. And if the Leafs decide to buy a new car, the taxes for that purchase will increase by nearly $40. And if anyone in the family choose smokeless tobacco, then those taxes will be increased some $15 per year. So for the average family in Oklahoma, this tax increase means you'll fork over an extra $132 a year to the state of Oklahoma. That breaks down to about $11 a month. Now, it may not seem like much if you have it, but for those who are already on a tight budget, every little bit hurts. I want it to be fair for everyone, but I, it looks like it may not be fair. And uh, we can pay enough already. Stephanie Frederick, News 4. City budget cuts affect these children by closing down their rec center one half of every day this summer. The budget also calls for layoffs to almost half the Parks Department staff. In all, more than 120 city workers stood to lose their jobs. But today, city officials confirmed that no one will end up on the street because of cutbacks. The city will offer new jobs to every employee who loses his current position. Officials say enough openings exist now to cover any layoffs. We're very happy that we were able to do it, that we happen to have almost exactly the same number of positions open as we had positions that we had to remove. It's going to mean some shuffling around of some of our people, some reassignment of some duties, but it, it looks like it's going, at this point, and it's as early, it looks like it's going to work. Even if they don't face layoffs, employees here still don't want to switch jobs. But they say the city budget doesn't give them any choice. It's going to be hard because I've done this for such a long time, but I think I can adjust to another job, whatever job they offered me. I think I could do it. And city officials say they'll help employees adjust by giving them new jobs that closely match what they do now. Bob Donaldson, News 4. and that we've requested from the legislature. The state will retain the hammer because the, uh, the person who is the seller does not have a permanent license and a temporary license can be pulled at any time.
Okay, now you should, don't, I think what we should do now, that now that I have recalled the, the writ of habeas corpus, is let this thing take its natural course. Between $1.75 and $2 a month, uh, the average homeowner, uh, residential, single-family homeowner, will see their rate, uh, their bill increase that much for, for sewage. A list of fireworks licenses received at the state fire marshal's office on May 3rd did not list Airlex Fireworks as a firm having a license to operate. But later today, officials confirmed Airlex had renewed their manufacturing license just five days ago. But obtaining a license to manufacture fireworks apparently does not mean anyone monitors whether a plant like Airlex is safe. In fact, all you need to do is come here to the tax commission office, pay $500, and you're in business. State fireworks laws have specific regulations about such things as where fireworks can be displayed and how much tax must be paid. But there is no requirement, say fire marshals officials, that a plant like Airlex be inspected by anyone. We do, uh, the fireworks laws do not require that we inspect the manufacturing facility. Now whether or not they're covered by OSHA or someone else, I don't know, but we are not required to, to inspect the manufacturing facilities. So essentially you wouldn't have? Right. Highway Patrol down if he'd heard anything, he said that uh, there's five. The what he said. If that was a person working as an employee on there, we would continue our investigation and probably follow through with what the statute allows us to do. And that, like I said, is a, is a criminal penalty. It's a misdemeanor. Carries a very small fine, very small jail term with it.
good to be a Christian because God, Jesus will help you a lot of ways. He's helped me a lot. So. This is a decision that does not inhibit religious freedom. It is a decision that enforces it. It is a decision that allows parents to select, determine, and choose the religious heritage and beliefs of their children. Well, of course, I'm very disappointed. I think it's uh, certainly not consistent with the uh, intent of the framers of the First Amendment, as we pointed out in the course of these appeals, and uh, which was intended, the uh, First Amendment was intended only to prohibit establishment of a national church. They come from all over the United States, Canada, even England, and they're headed east, New York City. The 1985 version of the Great American Auto Race paused for lunch and a break from the grind in Guthrie this afternoon. Oklahoma's first capital was all dressed up for the big day. It was a good day to take pictures and to reminisce about an earlier time. Things may not have been better, but they certainly were simpler. Take the cars, nothing newer than a 36 model. They had one that placed 10th at Indy, cars driven by husband and wife teams, one from England. They even had one that survived this year's bad tornadoes in the east. And reassuringly, one of the Oklahoma entries survived to the halfway mark between Los Angeles and the Big Apple. So what makes it all worthwhile? Why do you go through all this? Well, the competition of it, and uh, then there's a little pot of gold at the end of it, and we're gonna get there. The goal is New York City on the 4th of July. Getting there may seem primitive by 1985 standards. So what, these diehards say? They don't build them like they used to. And maybe that's too bad. George Tomic, News 4 in Guthrie. This is your interim license. This is what you'll work with. You need to post that in your establishment. Uh, More than 100 applicants for a liquor license got yes, their temporary yes, permits at the last minute. This is the last day to apply for a license before new liquor laws go into effect on Monday. Abel Commission officials expected a huge last minute rush because of the application flood earlier in the week. Now they face the enforcement nightmare of checking criminal records for every applicant on these forms. Well, it will be uh, it will be a task. Uh, I'm sure the uh, staff will be up to it. They were up to this this almost unbelievable surge of paperwork. We've put 800 applications through this office in two weeks. Able Commission officials also say just about every liquor by the drink club has applied for its license, but relatively few bottle clubs have complied, which means starting Monday, state agents can arrest the owner and even the customers inside an unlicensed bar. Bob Allenson, <laughs> News 4.
also tell him that that subject never comes up unless somebody else. Governor, uh, I'll go back to the tax raise we had last year, the great furor that it, that it had, and I can understand that. But when, when the chips were down and the people counted uh, noses, uh, in the final analysis they said we preferred that tax increase to have uh, had a devastating effect upon state government. I think that's what will happen today and tomorrow in the state of Oklahoma. Our goal of all along has been a $2,000 pay raise for teachers in the state of Oklahoma. And it looks like uh, now that the commitment is there for that, although it's not, not passed, uh, we're still looking and working toward that happening. People in the housing additions in apartments near the store awoke to find police searching their neighborhoods for the killer or killers of three neighbors. While there have been crimes in this fast-growing area of Edmond before, no one ever thought anything like this could happen. By twos and threes, the people who live nearby started showing up this morning at the scene. Many just sat in the parking lot looking at the store. Some, like Chuck Neal, had made late-night visits to the supermarket. He was shocked by the crime but equally worried about the safety of his own family. Yeah, I don't even want to leave my wife and kids alone today, you know, after something like this. So you see it and you hear about it, but not so close to your own house. It just gets worse and worse. And I don't know if, if I like living around here still yet or not. Surprising, it's very, very shocking. Hassan Bazi also lived just down the street. He is a foreign student like Champan Chehawasan, and he never believed such a thing could happen in Edmond. Like Edmond here is a very nice place to live, you know. And these things happening, no control, you know, it's, it's a tragedy. It is being called the worst crime ever committed in Edmond, and one that no doubt will take a long time for the people here to get over. Jeff Fowler, News 4, Edmond. They're both taken to one of them to county jail, one of them to Oklahoma City jail, where they are at this time. Did they offer any kind of resistance? Was there any trouble picking them up? No resistance whatsoever. Uh, we didn't have any problems. 